morning London and welcome to my latest vlog and today I want to talk a little bit about depth of field and how to use it creatively for a photo shoot not so much about landscape this is more about portrait because this is kind of my genre right and you can see where I am at the moment I'm by London Eye and uh, so I was uh, I just actually I just finished a photo session with a young gentleman who wants to be a James Bond. So it's a theme shoot, it was fantastic, it was really cool. And uh, I'm gonna show you some sample photos later and you can see exactly what I meant about using depth of field uh, in a more meaningful and creative way. I'm using the brand new OM1 for this vlog and also the brand new, also brand new, Joby Wavo Pro that I also mentioned in my last vlog. Um, yeah, it's, it sounds really cool. I mean, like I said in that particular video that if this active noise feature or reduction feature works, this could be the revolution of any vloggers or content creators dream in terms of external mic. Uh, so. Anyway, let me head back to um, where I shot this morning so I can tell you a little bit more about the shoot and I can show you the sample of my photo shoot so we can understand a little bit more about depth of field and also see why and when you should use shallower and deeper depth of field. Well, what I want to show you now is of course our famous parliament building and the Big Ben you can see behind me right there. Yes, the Big Ben is open once again. I don't know how many years now. I mean, it's been, what, four years? Maybe even five years since I last saw the full face of Big Ben, you know, and uh, it's, it's good to see it back because uh, a lot of my clients really wanted a Big Ben shot and I had to turn them down over the last few years. And because, you know, I just tell them, I don't Photoshop stuff because you know, uh, it won't look real and uh, if you want to see it you just have to wait until it's open and now it's open and um, that's why I started to get shoots again around this area and it's, I love it I love it always I always love Westminster it's always historic it's got a big band you know got the typical London architecture uh, it, it's a fantastic place to be so I did my literally my whole shoot in this area here and I would say like the the radius I was walking around here is probably around uh, I would say probably a couple of miles radius so I've been doing lots of them with the Big Bang as the backdrop obviously because uh, this particular shoot was actually uh, trying to mimic the uh, La Zambi's James Bond style and the, which had the Big Bang uh, Big Ben <laughs> in the background so he wanted to capture that particular mood and also maybe replica some of the posts uh, which we did uh, which is actually fantastic um, the, so I converted some of this photograph into black and white and just to try to get the same look and feel from that particular photo shoot that was done I don't know in the 1960s so that would be almost 60 years oh my god that's long <laughs> so that was cool that was really awesome uh, but I think we did a fantastic job and um, because my client dressed up for it and uh, the only thing he hasn't got is a prop gun obviously for, for good reasons because otherwise we, we would be questioned by the police this morning uh, especially in this area here and uh, it's high it's highly secured and uh, lots of CCTV lots of policemen hanging around here so if he has a prop gun without any license or any permission you know, we could be in deep trouble so he said that he may actually Photoshop a gun into his hand when he get back home and uh, so that would be really really awesome so this is one location we shot this morning It's actually right by here by the embankment and you can see the Big Ben right behind me and uh, which is actually pretty pretty awesome um, in this particular shot I did stop down and so I don't want to blur the, uh, the the Big Ben too much and in fact if you look at some of the older photographs of La Zambi you actually see that the Big Ben was clearly visible so even you can imagine back then they were probably using a medium format camera for, the, for that particular shoot and medium format inherently got even shallower depth of field so that means they would probably have to stop down to f8 if not f11 to get that sort of sharpness in the in the big bend so for me uh, using my cool four third is obviously good for that and uh, so in, instead of um, having shallow depth of field i did use a 1.2 pro lens uh, i did stop down to um, uh, 2.8 and 3.5 so in full frame terms it's about 5.6 and f7 so it's a relatively small aperture so i can still see the big bend quite clear uh, although it's, there is some separations there it's a bit blurred out but it's not entirely blurred so you can still recognize some of the features in Big Bang so this is very very important for that otherwise if you shoot at 1.2 1.4 in full frame this will be too blurred for it and apart from the shape on the outline of the Big Bang you probably won't be able to see much of it and this is why that for that particular purpose you have to stop down the lens 
and get as much detail as possible while not sacrificing the, um, the subject isolation. <laughs> oh yes, dog. Enter the darkness. Oh my god, I can't see anything. Whoa. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. So this arch behind me is totally awesome because I've done so many proposal shoots in here. Reason is because of this view behind me. It's actually facing the Big Ben. So in here you can actually see the whole thing. Uh, so the arch basically encapsulate the couple um, with the famous iconic Big Ben as the backdrop. So uh, you can't get better than this. And I've seen so many of the posts uh, by other uh, photographers uh, over the years and trying to mimic the same shot um, that each and every one of them became so popular all because of this setting here is fantastic. Oh my goodness, <laughs> more police. <laughs> So, it's a lot quieter now, so I can continue my conversation about that particular arch shot. Um, yeah, for that particular photograph, you really want to use deeper depth of field so you can see the Big Bang with details. Um, the, for me, if you're full frame, and I will probably have to stop down to F8 or even F11 uh, on a, um, uh, uh, a Micro Four Third, and I could get away with uh, 3.5 and uh, sometime 2.8 as well, uh, only because of the inherent uh, deeper depth of field on the Micro Four Third. So, if you use a wide lens, for instance, trying to capture the whole arch and uh, like I use a 17 or maybe even 12 millimeters um, the depth of field is so deep so like I could probably get away with like 2.8 uh, maybe even f2 in some cases uh, while I still see the uh, the big band with all the details behind so this you need to use more depth of field rather than just shallow uh, stuff uh, another shot I want to show you here is that um, uh, by here I can see the uh, you can see the step behind me here um, my client actually went down there this morning um, that I was shooting from here across the um, the uh, the um, the I wouldn't even call it I don't even know how to call it but anyway shooting uh, probably about uh, 15 minutes away from him uh, using a 40 to 150 um, 2.8 pro um, so I'm just stepping up here and just make a shoot across it and they're looking really really cool there and that shot again I just all I need to do just stop down so I can use a 5.6 uh, I don't need to use shallow depth of field because nothing to blur out you know it's all about the details um, so portrait is something very subjective you know really depending on what sort of thing you want to achieve and uh, I know a lot of uh, especially beginner um, they want to shoot everything wide open especially when they have the, like buy a brand new 85 millimeter lens in full frame or 45 in micro four third they just want to shoot everything 1.8 1.2 all the time this isn't the case in my professional jobs I rarely have to uh, shoot everything wide open I'll mix and match as and when I need to the next shot I want to show you is the Queen's Walk and uh, this is where we were this morning with the uh, Parliament building and Big Ben as the backdrop uh, and also obviously we now have these uh, what they call the National Covid Memorial Wall right behind me with all these lovely hearts here uh, to memorize uh, um, all those who passed away the victims of Covid basically um, this could potentially become a permanent fixture here as, as far as I know um, people have been talking about it this morning on the news and uh, so this could become a permanent thing not sure whether it's good or not and I know it's good to have a place for them and uh, this wall used to be really nice and clean and uh, movies were shot here James Bond was shot here so like there's a lot of movies being shot here so now it's kind of changed the whole outlook of it so we'll see but anyway so this is the shot here and uh, with the Big Ben so my client was just basically leaning against here and uh, on one of the, uh, the lampposts the iconic uh, old London lamppost here behind me here as you can see um, so now we have the angle facing the Big Ben you can see that here and uh, so I'm just checking my face so I can see exactly who I'm angling in so um, so here is actually really good I did use a slightly shallow depth of field just because of this particular shot I want to highlight him more than the surrounding although that I still want to make sure that the Parliament building and Big Ben is visible and recognizable so um, I still didn't shoot exactly wide open at 1.2 because I'm using a 25mm lens so a 1.2 can still be fairly shallow in, in micro four third even so uh, just be careful with that so I did stop down to um, I think 1.8 or maybe f2 um, to for that particular shot here it's really nice it's really nice and today the overcast does actually help in quite a few ways um, first of all um, because the, the photograph that my client wants to mimic you know from Lazambi and that particular shoot you can actually see that it was photographed 
uh, in an overcast day. So, um, uh, so this is actually give me the ideal weather scenarios for that particular shot. Uh, so I'm glad that I did that. So that was really, really awesome. Um, so I, I guess generally um, the use of depth of field uh, needs to be understood and practiced. And uh, so a few things I mentioned earlier, you know, like when to use slightly deeper depth of field, when to use slightly shallow depth of field, it's all contributing to a good mix and variety uh, of scenarios and needs and requirements um, to highlight that particular photograph. Um, the, or photographs, you know, a set of them. Um, the, so you have to understand exactly what I meant by that. Otherwise, you know, most people who are just starting a portrait would usually go with wide open shots all the time, whether it's going to be 50 mil, 85 mil, or whatever. You know, like this really easy and very tempting to do that because you just get a shallow depth of field look. But if you do that all the time, you're really missing the point, you know, like in an iconic location like this today and uh, this is something that you really want to see and my client wants to see because this is exactly what, uh, why you can see a lot of the movie posters and movie portraits who's done locations like this will have a shot, clearly see the backdrop and uh, so they know exactly where they are. Otherwise, they could have done it in the studio, they could have done it with uh, <laughs> anywhere really if you just blur too much. Um, so sometimes blur is not good it's counterproductive it's counter creative um, the, so yeah you have to um, be mindful of that and make sure that you know exactly what you want to portray um, uh, that particular photograph and finalize the presentations at the end so this is what I want to say in today's vlog and hope you guys enjoy it I know um, uh, many of you are wondering what I'm doing lately and uh, I've been busy photo <laughs> photo shooting people as you can tell my job slowly getting back up so which is good so I'll be doing a lot more of this kind of like going out vlogging and, uh, and also tell you a bit more like why I do things as well just hopefully give you a bit more educational content and also more meaningful content uh, rather than just a review gear review although having said that I still have a lot to review and uh, some of the lenses like the Olympus uh, 40 to 150 f4 pro you know and the OM1 I'm still making it <laughs> I don't know who's gonna watch it when I finish it and I hope you guys will still do um, but it's taken me a long time to do that simply because it's quite emotional when I do the OM1 and uh, without spoiling you too much you just have to wait and see my review and, and find out exactly why I said it's emotional uh, but other than that I'm happy and uh, especially now my job slowly back out, uh, back to normal now and uh, you know for my income is good and because uh, I've been holding off for the last two years now uh, as you can imagine because all these lockdowns and stuff like that so it's good to see some money coming back into the uh, to the bank account uh, it's always a good thing YouTube helps a little but you know as you can see that I I'm not driving a lot of uh, traffic uh, just for the sake of it and uh, only because I want to do something that I really enjoy doing um, But anyway, uh, I'll be heading back home soon to process the photo I take today I uh, hope you guys enjoy yourself and be mind uh, be safe be creative keep shooting uh, Remember this sub uh, uh, sub this channel if you want to stay in touch with all things photography filmmaking uh, And also, you know thumb if you really enjoy this vlog. So I'll see you soon Be happy. Peace Last bonus is this lamppost here, if you can see that. Well, unfortunately, the top bit is gone, uh, but this is where Lazambi posed as James Bond uh, for that particular shot. Um, really, really awesome. We did about four or five shots here, uh, which totally mimicking the original pose and everything. I think it's fantastic. It really is a shame that the top bit is gone, because otherwise, you know, you can almost get the exact identical shot. Brilliant, brilliant.